So, I've been thinking about making a video like this for a while. Um, I previously made one about sort of MMOs being addictive and wanting to play New World even though I know I wouldn't have fun with it and it's just not a game I really enjoy anymore. And um, I kind of have been on this kick where I've been thinking about games becoming narcotic and um, you know, just different things like having played like Genshin Impact or Warframe or there are these, you know, even some mobile games, which Genshin Impact is purportedly, but you know, other dumb mobile games like Idolmaster and stuff like that. And they're all uh, very addictive. And I, I do feel that's a really intentional design thing that started in mobile games and now has just bled into everything. And, um, you know, like when I was playing Warframe, there's this new system, the Kuva Lich system, and it's basically ripped off from um, Shadow of Mordor. You get this Lich dude who's mad at you, and you've got to grind, basically. You've got to grind out what um, codes you use to, like, execute him, and then when you know the codes, you have to then go get them out of loot boxes. Uh, you can also just go and buy someone else's Kuva Lich for platinum in-game currency and kill it and just be done with the system rather than farming. Uh, people say one to four hours. It felt like mine was going much slower than that, but I don't know. And um, I noticed it with Outriders, which is not a live service game, so they say, but it plays exactly like one. And it has an end game where you just farm out new gear so you can go up a single difficulty level and then farm out new gear. And then you get your three piece and you just do a lot of damage and that's it. And it's like a basically like a dopamine factory. Like you get to blow up the enemies, but then you don't. And then you farm a little more, and you get to blow up the enemies, but then you don't. And it's almost like you have this design that's, that's mirroring um, resistance to narcotics, you know? I, I do really feel like a lot of these games are becoming designed in this sort of narcotic way. And, um, you know, I think also there's this desire to create engagement. You know, recently... It didn't happen to me because I didn't give Ubisoft my email, but apparently Far Cry 6 will email you and be like, you're letting the people of Santo Paulo be victimized, do, 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 and try to get you to play the game again. Why do they do that? Because even though you bought the game, it's because the more you play the game, the better their metrics look for their investors, the more likely they can make an expansion pack, the more likely you buy in-game items. I don't know if there's a DLC store. I, I found the game terribly boring. But, um, but so they really want you to keep playing these games, even if it's not something they directly earn money from, because on the back end they earn money. Um, you know, I was recently playing Vermintide, and the game just gets too difficult. I don't want to keep playing it. You you get to a point where you really have to be perfect at the higher difficulties. So I'm not interested in that. But, you know, they've got a couple thousand people who really are into that. And that game, of course, has loot boxes too, which, you know, much like Overwatch, those loot boxes are not there to enhance the experience, right? They're there to give you little bumps of dopamine as you're playing to create this sense that every time you finish a match you get something in your brain because you get a little loot box and if you do more things during the match you get a better loot box and so that's the point that's the point is to create that little explosion in your brain and I, I don't think all these systems are as cynical as I'm making it sound like, I think part of the Kuva Lich system was someone played Shadow of Mordor, and they really liked the system, and they're like, this would fit perfectly in Warframe, and they did it. And then, you know, someone from some department said, like, well, we're not going to have great retention on this system unless you do this and that. And we really need retention. We really need player retention. Like, somewhere in there, 
there's some bigwig, there's some crank who is pushing these things, you know? And I think it's the same way like a old arcade game, you know, somewhere along the line when they were designing Centipede, someone said, this is too easy, we'll never get any quarters. You know, they're, they're, and that's not to say Centipede's a bad game or this horrible, cynical example of capitalism, but that happened. It had to have happened at some point because those games, the point was to make money and the same point of Warframe or Vermintide or any of these things is to make money. That's what they want. They want money. And so does um, the guy who runs your local hardware store. Is he evil? No, not necessarily. Are these... There are tons of YouTubers and influencers. Some of them are not so bad. You know, they want money, but there's there's a point in there where not everyone who does commerce is evil. You know what I mean? But these systems, and it depends on the game, like games like Genshin Impact are pretty dialed in to be very addictive, very addictive, and really keep give you a little dopamine hit, give you a little satisfaction, and then keep it away from you. Give you a little more satisfaction and keep it away from you further. And that's the whole way the original system worked, where you would the game would keep getting harder and there was no way you could go back. And even then, like you can't upgrade your guys all the way without the harder difficulties. So you know, maybe you're not as good at games, but you want to keep progressing in Genshin Impact because you're addicted, because they keep giving you free gotcha boxes, which train your brain like a Skinner box. They train you like a rat to get satisfaction when you open these boxes. Um, you know, and it, it's, it's an intentional system. Now, I don't think they're all evil, and usually when I make these videos, I just talk. I don't inline images or show gameplay because I think it's sort of like, I don't know, pointless. I'd probably get more views if I did it, but I don't really care about that. I mean, I'm not going to show you a PubMed article to demonstrate that, like, Skinner boxes work or that people are, you can use, what's it, operant conditioning on human beings. You, Of course you can. Of course you can. If... If someone ring the bell every time they fed you, you would react to the bell. You are an animal, and that's just how it is. You know, and the, the worst thing about this with these games is you play Warframe or you play um, Genshin Impact, and people are extremely serious about never spending a cent in the game. They will play it for 16 hours a day, but they'll never spend a cent on it. And that's, I think, what, what's so obnoxious about all these systems is that they work so hard to make these games extremely addictive. And then in practice, I don't think it makes them a lot more money. I think if you made the game fun and just had cosmetic stuff players could buy, they would buy it. And that's that. You don't have to make it obsessive. I don't think it's really necessary. You know what I mean? It's the same way, like, uh, you know, they didn't have to push opioids as hard as they did, right? Not a great example, but I'm drawing a blank, and we have to keep rolling. They don't have to do things as brutally as they do, but they do because... That's the nature of business. It's about the 1%, you know? It's about earning that extra 1%. And it's like, you look at these games and it's like, I know there are a lot of people who have different opinions on capitalism and money, but you know Blizzard didn't put those loot boxes into Overwatch because it provides a lot of value or it's very fun, right? The same way they're not in Vermintide because they're fun and they provide value. The same way they're not in Genshin Impact because they're fun and they provide value. They're in those games because they create dependence. And when they create dependence, it's more likely, especially with young people whose 
brains are more neuroplastic, and I'm not going to find a PubMed article to back that up, because just I'm pretty sure it's true. It, it creates that addictive impulse, and it gets them really hooked. And you look at how people play these games, and further, how they defend them, because it, it creates this level of engagement where they are the game. You know, these people are so into the game that if you insult the game, they feel personally insulted. And that happens with a lot of things, but especially with games. And I, I don't even really have an overall take on this. I mean, I do think it's bad. I don't think it's always, like I said earlier, the Philip Morris backroom thing where they're like, ah, so what if they die? They have children, you know? But like that kind of insane level of evil where there was really no concern for what cigarettes were doing to people. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like for some of these games, they, they do cross a line where they do try to make themselves extremely addictive and extremely habit forming and reward obsessive play in a lot of ways. And this started with MMOs, but it's gone to everything. Even single player games really want engagement and they really want people playing for 4,000 hours. And so they make these difficulties where it just gets harder and harder and harder. Like Dead Cells, which again, I don't think the guys who made Dead Cells are evil, but I do think somewhere along the line, they designed that game to encourage engagement, encourage people streaming on Twitch 24-7, give you this really high mountain peak. There's no skill ceiling there. You can just keep getting better and better at the game. And I do think it is so, you know, their DLC numbers go up and their views on Twitch goes up and the game is very successful. And maybe that's just the issue. It's much like YouTube where YouTube or Instagram, where everyone has to be edited because everyone's being edited. It's the same way my video probably isn't going to be very popular because I don't have cut-ins, all kinds of stuff happening, and and PubMed articles, and all this backup, as if, as if I'm this scientific voice of God person who's infallible, you know? Maybe that's it. It's just a game's weapons race, arms race, where the games have to keep getting more addictive to, to compete with one another, you know? And you make a game that just has a high score on it and is a top-down shooter, and the game does terribly because, well, you didn't put anything addictive in it. You didn't drive engagement enough, and maybe that's how it is, you know? These games are just going to get worse and worse, and people are going to keep on reacting to it because maybe we are just bags of chemicals who exist for no other reason to draw some some temporary joy out of uh, you know a stimulus maybe that's it maybe that's all entertainment is it's just a stimulus and a reaction and of course it makes sense to make your stimulus the most stimulating so you're going to put in the gotcha, and you're going to put in the, the stuff to force engagement, and you're going to make it never be able to be beaten and very hard and do all these things to keep people hooked. Maybe that's just how it is. I don't know. I don't think it's great, but I don't think it's going to change, you know? The more, the more I think of it, I think it's very much like the way social media works, where people on social media they don't get better like the, the the influencers and the people out there making tiktoks they don't have a ton of social concern like just like any celebrity probably like the ceo of philip morris they donate their money to charities but what they're doing isn't necessarily great for society so, I don't know. I don't know. These things don't happen accidentally, that's for sure. They didn't accidentally put in the uh, loot boxes. They didn't accidentally make the game, you know, 
give you what you want, then take it away, give you what you want, then take it away. This, these things don't accidentally happen. And I, I would be, you know, maybe that's something I should research. See how many of these games have psychologists on the development board, you know? I mean, or maybe I'm just insane. And this is all, it just happened. You know, no one was trying to make the games addictive. No one was trying to brutally farm engagement. No one's trying to get you to stream Far Cry 6 for 3,000 hours and get you totally hooked to it. No one's doing that. Even if it would increase their profits by 1%. It's all just happening accidentally. There's no real um, nefarious intent. I don't know. But uh, my throat's getting dry. I feel like I didn't do a bad job on this video. So that is it.